Do you view Trump as a national security risk? Um, I, I personally would just say I just don't believe that he should be a presidential candidate at this time. I think it's time to move on. Does it concern you that, I mean, he very I think well it should be. concern, yeah, absolutely. I have more clips to play for you, but this is Brian Butler, who worked at Mar-a-Lago for 20 years and who worked very closely with Donald Trump and is now essentially saying that Trump is not fit to be a candidate. What does it tell you when all of these people who worked closely with Trump and almost everybody on Trump's cabinet is now coming out and saying this man is not fit? fit for office. Take a look at this clip of Brian Butler describing Trump giving away national security information. Were there ever any instances when you were still working there that you witnessed where Trump was, in your view, carelessly throwing around national security information? You know, this really, you know, stood out to me, but in, uh, I believe it was April of 2021, um, there was a member, Anthony Pratt, who he was coming, he, he flew in the night before. He's an Australian billionaire. He finishes his meeting with the former president, gets in the car, and his chief of staff says, how did the meeting go? Pratt, without saying, just says, he told me, and it would be, you know, US military, you know, classified information of what he told him about Russian submarines and US submarines. And that's really all I remember hearing, and I went, what? You know, I'm thinking this. I'm in the car. I'm like, did I just hear that? So it, it wasn't like, oh, the meeting went well. We talked about it. it. was He went straight to the point. He told me that the U.S. subs and with the Russian subs and, you know, something that would pro more than likely in my mind be classified. So it was clear to you that he was basically seeking access to China. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, red flags went up in my mind years before that. So Anthony Pratt, this Australian billionaire that you're talking about, he would pay a lot of money to, to come and have these New Year's Eve parties. So, so it might cost a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars per person. He was giving a million dollars. And I think at the height he had 30 or 40 people there. So something that would be 50,000, let's just say max 50. Here's a guy that's just buying access. It's, it's very easy to see. It should be easy to see if you're not blinded by the cult of Trump. Butler even had to hire his own lawyers, pay out of pocket in order to break from that Trump orbit of lawyers. Butler explained to CNN how he unknowingly helped Walter Nauta deliver boxes of classified information from Mar-a-Lago on the exact same day that Trump and his attorney were meeting with the Justice Department about those documents. So Butler describes in detail how he thought it was unusual the way Walter Nauta was asking him to move these boxes in a secretive way on this day. And what do you know? There were the exact same boxes from the indictments. This next clip is a big deal and is beyond serious. Butler recounts Nada making a trip to Palm Beach, a secretive trip that ended up being the trip where he deletes the surveillance footage. Take a look. From each other. Your neighbors. We're neighbors. So we would always go walk and just on the walk I remember him saying, hey by the way Walt's coming tomorrow. Oh cool, that's great. I was like okay. It wasn't until the following day when we're out walking, he's like, hey, by the way, it's a secret. Don't tell anybody Walt's coming. And well, why? Well, he needs, me to, he needs me to find something out before he gets here. Oh, what's that? He needs me to, you know, how long the camera footage is saved at Mar-a-Lago. And I'm like, well, that's, that's odd. Why, why do you need the camera footage? Why do you need to know how long it's saved? And uh, his response was, I think they're looking for somebody that was there. I said, oh, okay. I wonder who. I, I have... So, so he tells you that Walt's coming, that it's a secret, that no one's supposed to know, and that they're looking to see how long the sur surveillance footage goes back? That's what he needed to find out by the time Walt got there. So now it seems really odd to me. Um, and then not many days later, when I receive a call from the corporate head of security at Trump Organization saying, why didn't you tell me Carlos moved boxes? At, you know. I didn't really know he moved boxes. You know, I never saw him move boxes on June 3rd. I mean, I know now that that's what it looks like was going on. Him and Walt were moving boxes, and then he drove them to the plane. But I had, I had no clue. My response was, what did I move? Did you see me on video moving, you know, something? But I guess he had gotten a, uh, a 
a call from the corporate attorney at Trump Organization and said, save this video, video footage. And that's when he went to look at the footage and said, why didn't you tell me Carlos? Is, you know, I guess it's Carlos was moving by. These clips keep getting worse and worse. I have another mind-blowing one to play for you, but I honestly feel bad for Butler. He was a valet for Mar-a-Lago for 21 years, and it seems like he realizes how in over his head he was. He describes encrypted cell phone apps, deleted security footage, even burner phones, all of these things in totality, including Trump's rhetoric and the under oath testimony of people that worked around Trump, kind of makes you think that Trump and his team are traitors. A common theme we've seen with the Trump administration is that if someone is not 100% loyal to him, not only will he fire them, but he will publicly chastise them and create nicknames, even if he said months prior that they were the best hire ever. In this clip, Butler describes one of these loyalty tests. He describes an encrypted app named Signal, and also the big part is that Trump's campaign manager had a large role in this. Watch. And then did you later have to assure to anyone else that, that your friend Carlos would be loyal so Trump? the end of that call with Walt, he told me, he's like, we're going to get Carlos an attorney. It's like, okay. So I get to the Hard Rock or right around the same time frame, and Walt says, they add me to a, a signal chat group with Susie Wiles, and he says something to the effect like, Brian, just can you put in this chat what you just told me? So I type it up. I say, hey, you know, it's a little weird to me, but... Um, listen, Carlos is very loyal. He would not do anything to affect his relationship with the boss. He loves what he does, you know, and you don't have to worry about Carlos <laughs> to, to, that, to that, you know, effect. And for those who don't know, Susie Wiles is running Trump's 2024 campaign, and Signal is an encrypted app where your messages disappear. Correct. So Walton. Trump and his sycophants are trying to spin this narrative of a witch hunt, but we have to push back against that, especially when we have all of this evidence and all of this incriminating testimony from people close to Donald Trump. I think a really interesting parallel to draw is how Butler handled the situation versus how Trump's property manager, Day Oliveira, handled the situation. Butler decided to hire his own lawyers out of pocket, as I said. Day Oliveira went with Trump's lawyers and he ended up lying to federal investigators. He repeatedly denied knowing or seeing anything about the documents, which was now just disproven by Butler. I have one final clip for you guys of Butler explaining why he decided to go public with this story. If you liked the video, leave a like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell, play the clip. You are Trump employee number five. You're a central witness in the classified documents investigation. Why are you speaking out publicly with your story now? Well, I mean, it's it's been almost a year since FBI agents showed up at the at my house when my wife was at home. And, you know, over the course of the last year, emotionally it's been a roller coaster. You know, a couple weeks ago it, you know, Judge Cannon says she's gonna release the names of the witnesses. You know, you go from highs and lows in this. And instead of just waiting for it to just come out, I think it's better that I get to at least say what happened than it coming out in the news, people calling me like crazy. I'd rather just get it out there. And, you know, the hope is at least I can move on with my life.